Hey guys, welcome back to this Grandame 3 tutorial series. Today we're taking our first look at phasers. Phasers are created using steps to transition any amount of values from one look to the next in a continual pattern. This opens the door to unlimited possibilities as every attribute that you want a fixture to hit can be added to your steps. In this first phaser tutorial, I will demonstrate how to create a chase effect. I will be using the dimmer and color features to make a simple color sweep, but the same principles can be used with any other feature. To get started, I'm going to select my pars and bring them to full. I'll bring the red attribute to zero, leaving the green and blue attributes at 100 to make cyan. We've now got a similar state as we would if we only wanted to store a new color preset, but to make this a phaser, we need to press the right arrow in the encoder bar to go to the next step. I want the second color to be magenta, so I'm just going to click on the magenta preset I've already made. Right away, the programmer is processing the phaser as a fade between the two colors, just as we can see in the selection grid. We can change the characteristics of the phaser by opening a phaser editor window. You can find it by clicking on an open space, then under the common tab, select phaser editor. In this window, there are plenty of options, but let's continue making the color sweep and we'll see some of those features as we go. We'll click on the Phase Edit button, and then select 360. In the selection grid, we can see that the PARs are now sweeping right and down through the two colors we selected as the phase has been spread across our selection. If I want to make the selection snap from one color to the next, I'll need to click on the Form button and change the form from the sawtooth form to the rectangle form. Let's say we want the color sweep to go right to left instead. There are two options for this. The first option is to invert the phase. We can do this by simply clicking on the invert button underneath the 360 button in the phase edit mode. Invert reverses the phase of the previously selected phase. We now have the color sweep moving to the left and up. Another option is to invert the X axis. To do this, we need to either open a matrix editor window, which you can find under the common tab, or just open the matrix dialog, which is towards the top right of the encoder bar. With the matrix editor open, I will select the Invert X option along the bottom of the window, and then close the window. Looking at our selection grid, the phaser pattern has not yet changed, but the selected fixtures now have a green border around them. This is because there is matrix information applied to them, but we have to reselect our phase before anything takes effect. If we click the 360 phase button one more time, the phaser will process the phase data in the new X inverted order, giving us a color sweep moving right and down. Since phasers are stored by their features rather than in a phaser pool, and we have both dimmer and color information, let's store this as an all preset. This will allow us to recall all of the features used in this preset rather than just dimmer or color information. Let's label this color sweep. Before moving on, let's take a look at the information this new preset is showing us. Along the bottom is the feature group indicator bar. It displays what features are stored, so in this case, it is telling us that there is dimmer and color information stored. Presets in the all pool will always display this bar. To the right side is the dimmer value indicator, giving you a quick reference as to what intensity the dimmer value was stored at. Working left to right along the top of the preset, we first see a green grid icon. This is to indicate that there is matrix information stored. Next is a light blue arrow with a line across the top. This tells us that there is information being used from a different preset inside this one, or what MA likes to call embedded information. If we look at the magenta preset we used for the second step in our phaser, it now has a light blue arrow with a line across the bottom. This means there is embedded information being sent from this preset since we used it for the second color. We will go further into detail of embedded presets and their usefulness in another video. The next icon along the top is the red S indicating that this is a selective preset. If you want more information about that, check out the video for universal, global, and selective presets in the description below. The final item to cover is the three purple squares. The purple squares indicate that there are steps stored in this preset. This helps you quickly identify what presets are of a single look and what presets are phasers. In the next video, we will cover phasers with movement effects, so be sure not to miss it. The last thing to do is clear our selection, and always remember to save our show file.